Welcome to the Bullcast Podcast. I'm Katie Pickler, and with me is Court Winsett. Hello, Katie. Cameron Spin. Good eye, Mike. And Nicole Ellis. What's up? Woo, we got a full house. We got a full house, but it's not even full enough. Not for what we're doing today. Because today is Generation Wars. Yes, except this battle is only going to involve like two and a half of the four or five living generations. So, Which probably means that we may have to do a part two because we may have to get some representation from the generations that are not represented. I guarantee you, David <laughs> is probably going to say something about the fact that boomers are not represented. Yep. And I can promise you that I'm going to be getting a call from Keiki. Because she's going to be <laughs> like, oh, why didn't you call me? I am Gen Z. I could have been on. Okay, so we're already teasing there may be an episode with <laughs> Keiki versus David. We'll see how that oh goes. My oh my word, no. <laughs> Keiki would die. <laughs> so what generations do we have represented? I'm a millennial. Millennial. Complicated question. Are you on the cusp? I'm a cusper, so we'll just say zillennial. Zillennial. She's a combo generation Z slash millennial. And of course, I am the resident Gen Xer. I am angry at everything. (laughs) (laughs) Well, before we get into this, I do want to note that Veterans Day is tomorrow, November 11th. Originated November 11th, 1919. The first anniversary, the end of World War I. Congress passed a resolution in 1926, making it an annual observation, and it became a national holiday in 1938. 16 years later, President Dwight D. Eisenhower. 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 <laughs> I don't know where that, I guess I'm thinking Oktoberfest. It's November, y'all. Okay, Lord. sorry. President Dwight D. Eisenhower signed into legislation changing the name to Veterans Day to honor all of those who served their country during war or peacetime. So that's a little history for you today for tomorrow being Veterans Day. A little salute to our veterans. Now back to the wars. Yes. <laughs> Which how I mean we're doing talking about wars Veterans Day tomorrow like <laughs> okay yeah that's probably you know ill thought out somehow but okay so the, today the list we're doing the list a little bit differently today because what we have is we have the list broken out by generation uh-huh. or actually not by generation so much as by birth year yeah uh, so you and Cam are gonna double team 1988 I'm gonna take on my birth year and Nicole will take on her birth year we have a list for each of the three oh and this is. Uh, uh, top movies, songs, shows, the year you were born. So Cam and I are both 1988. And so TV show, The Cosby Show. Roseanne. A Different World. Cheers. 60 Minutes. Mm. Movies, Rain Man. Oh, so good. Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Oh, my favorite. Coming to America. Oh, another good one. Yeah. Big. Loved that. And movie. Twins. All great ones. Songs, Faith by George Michael. You do gotta have it. Need You Tonight by NXS. I don't need them so much. <laughs> Got My Mind Set on You, George Harrison. Never Gonna Give You <laughs> Up, Rick Astley. <laughs> oh, man. We just, just got won. Rick rolled right in the episode. And then Sweet Child of Mine, Guns N' Roses. Yes. Oh, good. Yes. yes. Okay, so now moving on to my birth year. 1973, the top show, All in the Family, a classic. The Waltons, love it. Sanford and Son. I never really got into this show, but, you know, it was a very, very popular show. I just never could get into it. MASH. I love that. (laughs) uh, Still will probably forever and ever hold the record for the most viewers ever of a television series finale. It got more views than any other TV show, fictional TV show that has that has ever aired. So uh, that's that's a fun one. And then Hawaii Five O movies. Okay, movie list for my birth year is always kind of a little bit meh. <laughs> anyway, The Exorcist, which is awesome. Uh, Badlands, never seen it. American Graffiti, which is a classic. George Lucas's first big movie. Not his first movie, but his first big movie. The Sting. I've never seen The Sting, but uh, it's, it's, I've heard that it's very, very good. And then Mean Streets. I'm going to say out of this list of movies, Mean Streets is the one that I've never even heard of. Oh. And then finally, Songs. <laughs> this is, I mean, <laughs> y'all got such a good song list. This, this is some <laughs> garbage. Okay. Because 88's better. <laughs> 1973, Top Song. Song, Tie a yellow ribbon round the old oak tree by Tony Orlando and Dawn. How old are you? <laughs> bad, bad Leroy Brown by Jim Croce. That's not bad. Um, Killing Me Softly with His Song by R- R- Roberta Flack. Let's go. Okay, okay. I'm redeeming myself. Get it on. Let's get it on by oh Marvin Gaye. Mm-hmm. And then My Love by uh, Paul McCartney and Wings. Nice. 
All right, I guess I'm next. Yep, hey, you're next. <laughs> yeah, I was born in 1996. TV shows, ER, which I have never seen. What? No. Nope. That's crazy. Oh. I'll just go ahead and say I've never seen Seinfeld either. What? Which is next. <laughs> Suddenly Susan, never heard of. Um, I have heard of Friends, and I've seen Friends. So yes. At least that. there's that. There's that. Um, the Naked Truth, never heard of. Oh, my gosh. Showing my age, I guess. Movies, Independence Day, yes. classic. Welcome to Earth. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> Twister. Mm-hmm. We got awesome. cows. <laughs> <laughs> Mission Impossible. There's a thousand of yeah. them now. Yeah. Uh, Jerry Maguire. Show uh, me the money. money. Yes. You had me at hello. <laughs> and Ransom. Never heard of. What? Okay, you had the best movie list. Yeah. These are great yeah, movies. They're classics. Oh, her song. songs. I'm sorry. My first one has all of you beat with the Macarena. Uh, I oh, came hey, into this world Macarena. with this song playing. <laughs> um, one Sweet Day by Mariah Carey and Boys to Men. Because You Love Me, Celine Dion. No. Nope. Mm. Nobody knows the Tony Rich Project and Always Be My Baby, Mariah Carey. It is her season. She is defrosting as we speak. <laughs> dun, dun, I mean, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> okay, what are generations? I don't know. Tell us, Katie. Well, now I want Nicole to tell us. Okay, I'll tell you. Generations are the average period, generally considered to be about 30 years during which children are born and grown up become adults, and begin to have children of their own. See, it's interesting that they say 30 years there. Yeah. Because, um, like, for instance, Gen X, it's not a 30-year span by any stretch. I've never heard it defined as the starting point is almost always r- right around 65, and I've never heard it go into the 90s. Huh. Well, so we've got the silent generation, 1928 to 1945. They're 76 and over. Yep. 1951 essay in Time Magazine dubbed the people in this age group the silent generation because they were more cautious than their parents. Of course, their parents were the greatest generation. And so it's it's amusing to me that the greatest generation was followed by the, the, the silent, silent generation. Because they, they had to be silent because the greats were before them. Silent Generation helped shape 20th century pop culture with pioneering rock musicians, iconic filmmakers, television legends, beat poets, gonzo journalists, and political satirists. President Joe Biden is the first member of the silent generation to serve as president. So my parents are silent generation. They're that age where they were basically, this is people that were born while the war was going on. Great people. I love are they silent? No. Well, I mean, you know, they're they're not extraordinarily talkative, but um, I, I think they fit some of the characteristics of that generation. Tell us about Baby Boomers, Cameron. All righty. Baby Boomers were named for an uptick in the post-World War II birth rate. People were getting very spicy after the war. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Clinton was the first Baby Boomer to serve as president. George W. Bush, Barack Obama, and Donald Trump are also Baby Boomers. Their characteristics... They live to work, self-worth equals work ethic, they're competitive, and they enjoy working in teams, and they are disciplined. Yeah, so this is the 1946 to 1964. I couldn't eat my words, but we just mentioned that Joe Biden was the first president who was a silent generation president. He was the first president to serve who's from the silent generation. If he's the first, he may be the only president mm-hmm. of the silent sure. generation to serve because interesting i yeah. don't think there are going to be a lot of other silent generation that i see you know coming up that would be elected How old's president. bernie sanders yeah <laughs> well uh, you know he is one but i know. don't think he's gonna win so anyway <laughs> okay gen x gen x i'll take this one since uh, it's... take it okay so see gen x is 1965 to 1980 and by my math that would be and david loves it when i do math on <laughs> But by my math, that would be 15 years. I've heard it as late as 1985, but the latest I've ever heard it being cut off is 85. And it's usually some t- somewhere between 80 and 85 that it's cut off. Uh, so nicknamed the Forgotten Generation. So your parents were the silent generation and you're the Forgotten Generation. We're only the Forgotten Generation because of probably some stuff that we'll get into down the line about m- m- millennials and boomers. Y'all just forgot about us and started fighting with each other. So, Well, did you see how fast he jumped in to take this list? Right. It's probably because he feels a little forgotten like the middle child. <laughs> I was not the middle child. I was the special one. I was the baby. <laughs> Class X was the name of a chapter in a 1983 book, Class, A Guide Through the American Status System by historian Paul Fusell. Novelist Douglas Couplin used the term as the title of his first book, Generation X, Tales for an Accelerated Culture, published in 1991. It's one of my favorite books. 
It would be. No members of Generation X have served as president. Pew Research projects that in 2028, Generation Xers will outnumber baby boomers. Characteristics. Work to live. Crave independence. We don't crave it. It was thrust upon us. We are the latchkey kid generation. We've been independent since we were basically babies. Parents would like hand us a burger and leave us in a chair somewhere. And that's it. You know, (laughs) we would walk home from school every day and we would be at home alone because both parents worked. And now that's not my own personal experience, but there were a lot of latchkey kids in our generation. Coming home alone after school. Um, And, okay, so focused on results, thrive on flexibility, and adapt to change. He's really pondering this. Okay, here's the millennials, which, as in this generation, 1981 to 1996, I do not like the term millennial, but we'll get into that in a minute. Hal and Strauss introduced the term millennials in 1991. So after, like, you're starting this in 1981, but this term was not introduced until 1991. And the Generations was published. 2016 was the first year any millennial was eligible to run for president. Minimum age is 35. About 39% of millennials aged 25 to 37 have a bachelor's degree or higher, a larger percentage than previous generations. So we were definitely the ones all going to college, getting all the degrees. I'd love to do a study of degrees compared to your job. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, characteristics, fully transparent and shares everything. I mean, that makes sense because of all like the social media and booming there. Loves technology. Yeah, yep. Do well with detailed instructions. Mm-hmm. Although I have to admit, I feel like that's Amelia Bedelia because you have to be careful with the detailed instructions or else you'll end up with a turkey of wearing clothes because you said dress the turkey. <laughs> Sorry, I, I loved Amelia Bedelia. It's almost Thanksgiving. Yep. Desire to make an impact. Yes, very much so. Values diversity. Absolutely. Okay. And then, (laughs) Nicole, you'll take Generation Z, even though you don't claim Generation Z. Yep. Gen Z is 1997 to 2012. In January 2019, Pew announced that the post-millennial cohort will be called Gen Z. According to Pew, Gen Z is the most racially and ethnically diverse cohort. High school completion and college enrollment rates for Gen Z are high. They're up. Um, Some characteristics they have, they're tech in it. They're the first generation to grow up with modern technology. They're very accepting of others, realist, transparent, entrepreneurial, and invented spirit. Okay, so... influencers. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Yep. I'm going to say this, and everybody in this room has probably heard me say this, but you're going to give me the opportunity to get up on my soapbox and rant for a second about how lazy the name Generation Z is. Generation X actually meant something. It was part of our identity as a generation. They called millennials Gen Y before they really sort of coined the millennial term as the generational name for Gen Y. And then with Gen Z, they're just going to be like, well, we had Gen X, Gen Y. I guess we're to Z now. We'll just call them Gen Z. That's just lazy. Come on, people. I like that for a minute there, it looked like we might start calling them Generation Zoom because Zoom became a huge thing while they were teenagers, I guess. There is also a nickname, Generation Me, because apparently they think the world revolves around them. (laughs) Oh, not saying whether that's true or not. (laughs) So then Gen Alpha is the next one, 2013 to present. So, Nicole, you mentioned this term. Tell us what you classify yourself as. Well, first of all, the Zillennial are those wedged at the tail end of Millennials and the start of Gen Z. They're a group made up of people born between, you know, like 1994 and 2000. It's a unique generation, one that grew up with the transition from the non-digital to the digital age. Because I remember being a kid and having a flip phone. And then when I think, I think my first year of high school, the iPhones came out. Mm. So I feel like I have both characteristics of millennial and Gen Z. But millennial, I think, is what I truly vibe with. <laughs> Did you deal with the dial-up of the internet? <laughs> um, if I did, I was too young to remember. <sighs> that still haunts my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> a good example is I have an older brother, so he grew up listening to NSYNC and Backstreet Boys with the blonde tips and everything. Mm-hmm. So I was way into that boy band, but I was also way into One Direction, which mm. is more Gen Z. Yeah. <laughs> so I get the best of the boy bands, I think. Yeah. I feel like millennials are getting blamed for a lot of Gen Z stuff right now. Yeah. You, I mean, the things that you hear... It's still the boomers complaining about everyone. Hi, David. Um, but seriously, it seems it seems like a lot of the time when you hear a boomer complaining about something that the millennials do, it's actually the Gen Zers that are really the ones that are guilty of it yeah. mostly now. And y'all, y'all, y- the millennials, y'all have grown up a little bit. 
Yeah. Well, and it's again, like this is obviously generational. This is stereotyping. You're lumping a ton of people all into one little classification, Mm -hmm. knowing that there's exceptions because obviously everyone is different and you've got the people that are millennials, but closer to, you know, Gen X, you got millennials closer to Gen Z. And it is funny though how we just completely skip past your generation, Court. You're <laughs> right, because you've got the boomers that are the older, well established. They, you know, are thriving in their careers, very successful at this mm-hmm. point. And it's skipping past those like in betweens and going towards the youngsters, the new ones that are butting into their careers just getting started. Yeah. Y'all, y'all are just in the crossfire. You know, One of my favorite things to do is to peruse memes that talk about just sort of the the Gen X experience. And and some of my favorites are things like the implication that we'll just sit back with a martini and watch millennials and and boomers tear each other apart. Are you Don Draper? But then I have mentioned many times the one that I like the most is the one that says that to baby boomers and millennials, remember for every baby boomer or millennial that you hate, there's an entire generation in between you that hates you both. (laughs) (laughs) That's hilarious. <laughs> and my argument, because boomers do hate millennials, is just like, you guys were our parents. We are the way we are because of you. <laughs> that is a, an interesting point. Gen X, there may be some Gen X are out there, Gen Xer parents out there that are parented millennials. But I think for the most part, millennials came from late boomers and early Gen Xers. So like... You, you Gen know, Xers have the Zers. Yeah, we're we're responsible for the Zers for sure. <laughs> You're all welcome. Of, yeah, all what of an my abomination. Kids. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, every generation that complains about the generation below them uh, was was responsible for birthing them. It seems like. <laughs> I want to double down on these stereotypes. Let's just quickly (laughs) roll through them because we went through each of them and gave a few characteristics. Let's start with Gen Z. Do you agree or disagree with the characteristics? If you were to sum up Gen Z in one word, what would you say? Entitled. Uh, Yeah, I would would say me-centered. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We need all of these generations. We need the personalities. I was going to say, we love all of our listeners, no matter what generation you're in. We're just speaking on what the stereotypes stereotypes, are. And we are not saying that you who are listening, that we're calling you this. If I have heard one complaint about Gen Z, it is that they're they are entitled. I'm not saying that that complaint is true or not. I'm just saying that that is the stereotype that you hear most. Yeah. What about millennials? A lot of what I saw online was saying millennials are lazy and entitled, which I don't really believe. We just have a different way of doing things. Again, a lot of that, I think, comes from the older generation that is doing the judging. Because boomers judged Gen Xers before y'all were born. Um, or at least before you were old enough to be judged, uh, millennials, that is. And they didn't call us lazy, but they did call us slackers. That was a big thing for us, was we were a bunch of slackers. And then the millennials came along, and everybody forgot about Gen X and started talking about millennials. And, oh, you're lazy, and, oh, you you know... You went to college and spent your parents' money to major in underwater basket weaving and stuff like that. (laughs) But y'all just sort of inherited that animosity towards your work ethic from from us. We just I think y'all became the silent people. That's really what it is. But I think a lot of it, you look at kind of what's happened is you've got a lot of the millennial generation that were pushed into college, pushed into going different directions, pushed to try and follow the path that some of the boomer parents had done. And then as you get closer to the millennials going into the Gen Z's, then you've got them going, oh, well, I don't want to go to college. I want to do my own thing. I want to do this. And so I think there's a compromise of they're trying to have their own independence. They're trying to figure it out. But also boomers are probably seeing it as, unfortunately, the millennials and the Gen Z's don't understand you got to put in the time to get to a certain thing. They're wanting that get rich quick scheme, which is donning the TikToks and things like that, the influencers where it's just like, oh, I don't want to come in and pick up trash and, you know, do the housekeeping type things at a job. I want to go straight to being the VP and doesn't understand the stair step approach. Yeah. It doesn't, doesn't really understand the whole, you've got to work your way up in a career. I've, I've encountered a lot of millennials and Gen Zers who, who want to know why they can't start a job as, you know, 
the senior whatever, blah, 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 making $80,000 a year. And it's just, that's just not the way it works. Well, but that's what you do. They'll say that to their, their boss, you know, well, you're making that much. Well, I'm the boss, you know, that's a false equivalency in every possible way imaginable. I have more experience. I have more education. I own the company. I don't know. (laughs) You know, it's any number of things, but you no, you're not just going to step out of college and get a job making X amount of dollars and being in charge of your own life and your own schedule. It's just not how it works. Yeah. I thought the characteristic for millennials of do well with detailed instructions is pretty spot on, at least for me. Mm-hmm. I like guidelines and I, I crave doing well. I crave like feedback, like good job. Interesting, because one of the next things on the list of things that is said on the list of stereotypes, career stereotypes here that we have that we haven't really delved into yet is millennials can't take constructive criticism what is that is, uh, it, is that is that true yeah i mean maybe there is some defensiveness there I, yeah. I feel like that's for every generation though that's just human nature i think some people can take constructive criticism better than others if you put an extraordinary amount of labor into something and you're very proud of it and then somebody criticizes it you're going to you're going to bow back. The question is whether you can realize what you're doing and realize that you're taking something personally. So, I mean, if you don't take it personally, if you don't just go, oh, I put my heart and soul into this and you, the, you then you criticize me, then obviously you can take the, the constructive criticism and correct your work and move, fall, move well, on. So as you're saying that I'm really thinking about, and again, this is kind of stereotyping, but millennials, I believe at least how I am, and I think probably Cam, we'll take the criticism. We may take it very personally, and we may get upset about it, but then it almost lights a fire underneath us to like, oh, well, I'm going to you know, prove you wrong. I'm going to get this done. I'm going to do it 10 times better next time. I think, unfortunately, with the Gen Zs, it's almost like, okay, then, bye. I'm done. Like, the second we they... Out. The it's sec- not fitting my vibes. Yeah, the second they get yelled at about it, it's like, okay, well, this isn't for me. Like, it's a toxic environment. I shouldn't be here. And I think it's it's kind of one of those that you you gotta, you're gonna have some bad days. You're not gonna please everybody. Like it's there's gonna be some screw up moments, and you have gotta learn from them because most of the time, if a job is willing to give you constructive criticism, then you should take it. I I can say right now that that my my daughter is screaming at at her iPhone Sorry, as Katie. she listens to this podcast, going, "I work seven jobs. I do this. I do that." So we're, we're this doesn't apply to to all. Gen Zers, no. this, again, we're just addressing some stereotypes. It's it's a lovely double standard because yeah. as millennials, we hate how the boomers bash us, but yeah. I mean, we're really bashing the Gen Zers we, right we now. Are. Well, and that, I mean, I've, I've personally done that. I've heard somebody be like, oh, those millennials don't want to work. I'm like, it's the Gen Zs. It's not us. <laughs> so I'm sorry, but it's, we're, it's just part of it. But what about this, that uh, Gen Xers don't play well with team members? How do you feel about that, Court? Sure. No. <laughs> Can I work on a team? Absolutely. Every employer that has ever interviewed me, I have told them that I could work on a team. Do I like working on a team? Absolutely not. I would much rather work by myself. And it's not because of some sort of like, you know, the mentality. I I know a lot of people, and I'm not even going to ascribe this to a particular generation. I just know a lot of people that very much have the mentality, if you want something right, you've got to do it yourself. And that extends to their work with a team. There's always that in college, there's always that group project that you have to do and one person always ends up doing the bulk of the work because you got the one person who doesn't do anything and the other people who are kind of wishy-washy and so one person ends up doing everything i'm kind of talking about that but i'm also talking about the attitude if you want something done right you have to do it yourself i know a lot of people who think like that and the attitude that i have about working by myself doesn't necessarily stem from that same mindset. It's not that I think that I am the only person who can do it right. It's just that I like my alone time. Um, (laughs) But I don't know that that is necessarily a generational thing entirely because I'm also, I'm an introvert. So interacting with other people takes a lot out of me and I would rather (laughs) just be in my office by myself doing my work. Okay. So baby boomers are out of touch with technology. So yes and no, I think, and and I kind of feel this as a millennial, like I can't keep up. There is so much changing technology. And I've had stuff like I had to get my 16-year-old cousin to explain how to make a TikTok because I can't keep up with that technology. So I get frustrated sometimes and I can understand the boomers like, what is this? I don't understand this and just give up on it. Well, yeah, I think I think that's a lot of it because I even feel that in myself a little bit now. I'm, it's not so much that they just can't comprehend the technology they just don't care. 
They're like, why do I need this? I don't, yeah. I, I don't need this particular technology. I'm fine with the stuff that I have. Just leave me alone. It's like I had a paper calendar before this. I don't need to have <laughs> I, an online calendar. You know what I love about my paper calendars? I used to have paper calendars tacked up everywhere because I love picking out calendars and all the different pictures and mm-hmm. all the different little charts and graphs and stuff that you can have as your entertaining thing for the month. I love that. Why would I want to give that up? Even though, yes, I also digitally know what day it is at any given time just by looking at my watch or my phone or my whatever, you know? Well, I truly think that the difference between a millennial and a boomer here is a millennial will take the time to learn. Like if you don't, if you figure out something on your phone, you don't know how to use it. Okay, tell me how to do it. A boomer does not care and they don't want to listen to you when they, you tell them how to do it Mm. from personal experience. (laughs) Okay. So Gen Zers are addicted to technology and can't handle face-to-face interactions. I feel like this fear started with the millennials and it's really going to be true with the Gen Zers that I remember hearing In college, there being fear of people weren't going to be able to write. They would write like they text. Mm -hmm. And that although I think now that's kind of gone away because you don't do the like shorten. If you send a text message and it's like shorten words, then you're like, oh, you're you're not a hip person anymore. Or just respond with K. It's like, what does that mean? Yeah. This goes this goes farther back than just texting though. Back when email became prevalent, mm-hmm. people started lamenting the loss of face to face communication just because of email. Or even people that to this day, uh, boomers that absolutely prefer making a phone call over sending an email. Yeah. And and think that sending an email is is the absolute worst sin if you could just pick up the phone. And I understand that mentality sometimes because sometimes I get an email from somebody and I'm like, why didn't you just call me about this? But on the other hand, I, you know, I prefer not to talk to people, like I said. (laughs) So it's a lot of times it's easier for me to send an email, but there is, there was definitely a generational opinion that email was going to be the destruction of face-to-face communication and phone communication and people were no longer going to talk to each other Mm -hmm. so there's always that fear and as technology has developed it's just been more and more but if you think about it now we're almost granted it's a technological face-to-face but a lot of people are back to face-to-face communication when they used to just rely on email or text because now people are Zooming or FaceTiming or, yeah. you know, whatever. I so, feel like the youngsters, youngsters, I'll like see my little cousins and stuff like that, which are definitely Gen Zers. They're FaceTiming randomly. Like, yeah. they're just hanging out and doing their makeup or whatever and like yeah. got a FaceTime. And I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, no, what? <laughs> I have seen one of my children walking around the house talking to somebody on FaceTime and whenever they would get to somewhere where they had to stop to do something they would set their phone down where the person they were on FaceTime with could see them but they'd be you know walking around the kitchen or walking around the the den or whatever or cooking a lunch I don't know and they're just so they're constantly interacting by video and they can see each other but uh yeah it's I, I, to me it's weird I'm like wh- what again why didn't you just pick up the phone sometimes I don't want to be on video <laughs> my wife who's a millennial says an unsolicited FaceTime call is an act of war. <laughs> right. And I agree. I can't stand it. It's like, oh, uh, I just put a face mask on or I just yeah. got out of the shower. Like, yeah. This you- is where I, I hate FaceTiming. I mm. will refuse to FaceTime. Like, just text me. Yeah. I, I'm probably laying in bed with my hair, like, in a mess. I don't yeah. want you to see me. Back to the email thing. I prefer to email just because I have a paper trail. Yeah, it absolutely. It has saved my, my tail so many times. Oh, yeah. And in the legal profession, to, to take that and extend it a little further, I still deal with a lot of attorneys who send a letter. And the funny thing is they draft a letter, they sign the letter, they scan the letter and they email me the letter, (laughs) but it has to be a written out letter. And, and again, it's because they want that paper trail, but I mean, come on, an email is just as sufficient a paper trail, I think as a letter is. So again, I think some of it stems back to the art of the letter is being lost and the formality of the letter. There's more formality in a letter than there is in an email. But yeah, I, I agree with that. I would much rather email because uh, that way I have a record of what I told what person, unless I don't want there to be a record, in which case, (laughs) why don't you just give me a call? I also think email saves a lot of time instead of like having to find a time and a place to meet and make sure everyone's there. Just send me a quick email and I'll get it done whenever Mm. like that. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, and you've got time to answer it when you can. 
I will say like business wise, it's a mix between phone calls or emails. And that's why you kind of ask people's preferences. But personally, I know, you know, sometimes people will ask me to help with stuff. We've done episodes where Cam and I don't know how to say no when people ask for things for us. But I get so frustrated when someone's like, hey, call me when you need a second. I need to ask you something. Or when you get a second, call me. I'm like, Look, you would get so much further if you would just send me a text or send me an email with what you're wanting so I have time to think about it and decide instead of you just catching me off guard. And I'm like, uh, because then I'm going to say yes. And then court's going to tell me, why'd you do that? <laughs> <laughs> I have literally said those words to her many times, yeah. just in case you're wondering. Um, okay, so next one on here is Gen Xers are way into work-life balance. Um Work-life balance is a phrase that I don't recall hearing <laughs> until later on in my life. And I certainly am not sure that it was coined in reference to us, to my generation. But we definitely had a little bit more meh in us than, than, our, than our previous generation. A little bit more kind of like, you know what? I've worked and it's, it's 8 PM. It's, it, it is time for me to go home. I, and it's not so much like I need my work-life balance, but it's like, I, this job, you know, it's it's eight o'clock. I, I, I've got some other things to do and and I'm feeling meh about this right now. Would you say that Gen Zers are life life balance? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, I don't know. I have this this sort of strong opinion that our generation is just not as bothered by mediocrity. <laughs> it's like, you know, if it's OK, yeah, that was a mediocre. But you know what? Mediocre is a C. So uh, we're, we're good, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I do want to throw out because we have been trashing on the Gen Z's that I really do feel like on the negative side, they're kind of more selfish. They're more entitled. They don't seem like if things are kind of not fitting their vibe, they're going to jump ship. But if we could channel that energy that they have they really could do wonderful things because they are as i think cam said the most diverse and most politically active and really trying to like rally and support things and get behind it that they could do incredible things if they just channel it in the right direction okay so millennials are entitled and lazy i just called gen zers entitled, entitled and, and lazy and, yeah and but <laughs> believe it or not there was a time when the generations above us were calling gen xers the ones that were entitled and lazy or slackers or and they always want to place the blame on someone else yeah. they don't want to take fault for this yeah and like millennials and gen zers are the are really kicking back the boomerang kids which is the kids that are coming back home and not leaving which then kind of goes to another point y'all said like the baby boomers are allowing it to happen mm. It's not like you were saying, I feel like your generation court, you were just kicked out of the house like, bye, good luck, here's a burger. <laughs> <laughs> okay, to be fair to my parents, I didn't, I, they, I'm sure, I, no, your parents I'm sure I could have, I could have gone back home after college if I needed to. But as, as people are probably very well aware at this point, I had a, a high school sweetheart that I was intent upon marrying basically very early on in life. I knew we were going to get married. So I absolutely was planning on graduating college, moving out, living on my own and so forth. But I already had the whole life and wife and kids thing sort of mapped out for myself. So, you know, if I had needed to move back home because couldn't find a job or because I wanted to change careers or something like that, my parents would have absolutely welcomed me back with open arms. I think to this day, they would welcome me back with open arms. And there's nothing wrong with it. It's again, we're just generalizing and stereotyping. We're not judging so, boomers can't be bothered to learn new skills. That's kind of go back to the technology. Can't teach an old dog new tricks. I mean... I mean, there's a little bit of truth here. Yeah. Like, dealing with my parents and stuff, they're just like, I don't know how to open this PDF, or I don't know how to enter my Wi-Fi password multiple times, and it's like, it's not difficult. Mm. But they just don't care to learn it. It's easier for them to just ask one of their children, do it for me every time. You know what really aggravates me? I'm going to call my mom out. If you send her a picture, she won't save it. She will screenshot it. So oh, the whole border is it's the, the most picture. boomer thing. <laughs> I have of to all tell time. her, no, why? You click the little button right there. But why are you screenshotting? <laughs> Sorry, I just had to rant. I love you, mom. But she, I was to say, your mom's one of our biggest fans. <laughs> she <Love> is. <laughs> she is the fan. Okay, so Zillennial. Um, it says Gen Zers have a short attention span. How do you feel about that? Uh, um, I don't think that's true, but even if we do, that just means we can get a lot of stuff done than more than a regular person. <laughs> like, I can bang out a She's few things. She's taken a short attention span and turned it yeah. into a superpower. Superpower, yeah. I that's mean, what I do. You think I think mean, it, it kind of makes sense because TikTok, yep. you know, Gen Zers are all about that, and it's just very short videos for the most part. 
Yeah, we don't want to. you're just scrolling through. It's know. just constant content. I mean, that, this may be me because like, I have a real short attention span. There's I'll, nothing wrong with that either. I don't think so. I'll be watching a TikTok video and then if it takes for, if it's one of those that builds up and takes for, I'm like, nope, Hate scroll, that. move. I don't not, like the three minute TikTok. No, I'm like, I, move on. It depends on what TikTok I'm watching. If, if I'm watching something that I know is a build up to something funny. Then I want the I, I want the payoff quickly. It, but I I watch a lot of TikToks that are like book reviews, and three minutes for a book review is really kind of short. <laughs> yeah, That's, I mean we mentioned TikTok a lot. I think we are actually going to do an episode kind of talking about TikTok and you know the market influence with people buying things and people getting information. So I think we're going to do an episode on that. I think just to to bounce back to the whole Gen Zers have a short attention span though. I think. Over the generations, you've probably seen sort of a attention spans decrease as technology has increased and enabled people to get to the payoff quicker. Um, I think everybody's attention span has decreased somewhat, but it's probably also a little bit toward, you know, a little bit based on generation. But I think a lot of it just has to do with technology and what is available to everyone. So everybody's attention span is like, nah. Give it to me now. I wonder what this next generation is going to be, Generation Alpha, if they're going to be kind of totally opposite of Gen Zers and like more like hardworking, work ethic, like that type. But this is Cam. This is your kids, right? Oh, yeah. All three of them. Yeah. So okay. what what are what are Cam's kids going to turn into? That's the question. They're all so different. I don't know. I don't know. Interesting. I feel like it's a very anxious generation. And maybe that's because of COVID. Yeah. It hit when they were so young. But yeah. they, they seemed a little more anxious than I did as a kid. I didn't have any worries in the world. And they also really want to be entertained at all times. As a kid, <laughs> we just went into the backyard or walked around until it was dark outside. And I never asked my parents to entertain me. But right. my kids always do. Mm-hmm. Do you have a quiz for us? I do. I'm really excited about this. Okay. This is Gen Z slang, TikTok slang, and I'm really just court smiling at me. And I just can't <laughs> wait to hear his thoughts on this. I'm so this kill is it. like, yeah. All right. Number one, what does it mean to be basic? Just like everybody else, not unique. You don't pass the vibe check. Do you have an answer, Court? I tend to agree with with Katie. I've always just assumed that it was sort of. You're so basic is is kind of just the you are not in the know about what is cool and what is what is actually stylish and and hip or whatever what is on fleek now. Oh yeah, I love oh, oh, on fleek. fleek. That's a millennial thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're right. It's a word to describe someone who likes mainstream things and is in con- considered unoriginal. Mm-hmm. So you don't want to be basic. Yeah. Um. What is a bop? That's a good hit. That's it's a, a good song. Good song. Yeah. Katie looks like she didn't know what that <laughs> I did not know that it, one. Yeah, it's a really good song or a really good beat. How many bops are there on the new album? They're all bops. They're all bops. All bops. Okay. Taylor does not flop. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor has no flop. Taylor no. is all bop. She's a bop bop. Yes. <laughs> okay, what does having tea mean? Oh, spill the tea. Spill the tea. It's gossip. Drama. Yes. Come on. Yeah. Gossip, drama. Oh, Another yeah. word for gossip. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. What does it mean to be ghosted? Oh, somebody just like ignores you yeah. and like drops off the face of the earth. It's only possible nowadays that communication is so digital. You just stop answering calls. You stop responding yeah. to texts. You, just, you know, oh, you, you leave that. Leave them on read. You leave that last <laughs> yeah. snap on read and uh, or on read, and, and yeah. you just that, that's it. Well, at Boom. least y'all didn't grow up with dating apps because oh, that's the whole them. theme. With mm. you just ghost people. Mm. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I wouldn't know how to do with myself on those dating apps. They they freak me out. <laughs> of course, dating in general, I haven't done since I was sixteen. So, yeah. well, you are very lucky. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what does it mean to be a stan? A fan of somebody. Yeah. You love them. Yeah. Katie didn't know that. I don't nope, think. didn't know that one either. It comes from it comes from Eminem's yes. song. Oh, um, uh, yes. I yeah. know Eminem. I love Eminem. It's like you can be a fan, but <laughs> a stan, a stan is, is bigger. I'm obsessed, a Taylor Swift stan. Yeah, it, 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 you will again, stalk them to their house. But they stan was like crazy. Yeah, he was a stalker. Yeah. So it's it's kind of taken on a less a yeah. less negative connotation. Yeah, because that music video was so like, oh my gosh, like. But it, now it's like a verb too. Yeah, like you, you stan. You stand yeah. Taylor Swift. You're not just a stand, but you stand Taylor Swift. Okay. So, so Do forth. you stand someone or something? Shoes. Okay. You're, you're a shoe <laughs> stand. They're just a Parker. <laughs> Cam is a disc golf stand. Yeah. Court. No, nah, I'm not He's a Gen Xer. They Green don't Bay. stand anything. Green, They're just Green, grouchy Green, all the time. Green Bay. <laughs> Green, <laughs> Green Day. I just I sit around and, and, nope. and frown at yeah. people. That's, that's what I do. Okay. Number six. What does it mean to be chuggy? I don't know this one. Cam looks like he knows. 
It's either basic or granola, but we've already discussed basic. Chuggy girls. That was like a thing, right? I, I don't like know. The, like the the fla- hydro flask. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't know how a to visco like. Visco girl. Yeah. How do you how do you describe visco? this? Well, I don't know how visco. you say it. it's visco, visco like Vis- the visco app. Visco. Oh yeah, I've heard of the visco app. I've heard app. visco. Yeah. And, okay. But it's, is that yeah. like big sorority t-shirts and the hydro yeah, flask yeah. and the ponytail? Yeah. Uh, there's no side parts. Side parts aren't allowed. They're mm-hmm. chuggy apparently, and skinny jeans. Mm. Millennials. Yeah. So, Hiding my side part. <laughs> <laughs> it's something that is uncool, dated, and trying too hard to be trendy. Mm. It's hard to move your side part to the middle. Like us millennials that, that feels are like it's a, real it's, hard. It feels like it's a, a, cousin, a, ba- a cousin of basic then. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, interesting. Well, Chugi, they it's kind of a joke because they say millennials took over Chugi and now it's not cool. <laughs> like, oh, millennials say it? Never mind. Never mind. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Number seven. What does bussin mean? Oh, it is it is good. It's either like delicious or it's awesome. It's just Can you tell me the marketing kiss. person is? Chef's yeah. kiss. Like, That's Bus and Janelle. Yeah. I don't know if you get that. Um, I don't know, Janelle. It's it's a TikTok. It's this uh, girl who used to do keto and everyone would comment on her. Okay, that's it's. this is a story that doesn't need to be told. <laughs> <laughs> it's an adjective used to describe something that's really good, like a food that's really tasty. Mm. Ah. Okay, what does mid mean? Not good. It's it's like mid tier, but it's just mm-hmm. like oh that song is mid. It's like oh, it's not great. Mediocre. Mediocre. Okay. Yeah. This TikTok slang is used to denote that something is average, mediocre, and doesn't live up to expectations. What's a finsta? Uh, fake Instagram. Fake yes. Instagram. Yes. Yes. Got one. A finsta is the Instagram page that all of my kids let me follow. Yeah. <laughs> they don't put the real stuff on there. I doubt it, except like, with the exception of possibly my oldest. The, yeah. I'm pretty sure I don't see the the real pages of my youngest for sure. Oh yeah, my teen cousins have blocked everyone in the family, yeah. so they're like, we don't want you to see our stuff. I keep wanting to be added to the finstas on my cousins, and that's that's <laughs> kind of like with uh, with Snapchat. You know, they, they have their Snapchat story, but I know I'm I'm not seeing There's private stories. Yeah, I'm I'm not I'm not in any of the I private stories. I don't think you want to know. I don't. I mean, <laughs> for the most part, anything that I asked my kids, they would tell me the truth about. So I'm not particularly worried if I. I had concerns i would just ask and they also know very well that like if one of my daughters is posting some sort of sexy pic out there i don't want to see that nonsense <laughs> good dad alert yeah <laughs> all right this is the last one which i think you should know what does it mean to have a glow up it's like the swan you were yeah. ugly and now you are very attractive <laughs> yeah isn't it yeah. more than that? I thought it was kind of like when you get done up specifically for like a picture for like a, a an can. Insta picture or something. I mean, like a lot of times they'll compare it to like here's your high school picture, here's your like you know college picture, okay. or and you've like just changed. You've like Neville Longbottom is a glow up. He glowed up. He yeah. Glo- yeah, he glew up. Yeah, it's to go through a positive physical, mental, or spiritual change. Mm. So he glowed up in all the ways. I'm, 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 <laughs> That's I'm, also another millennial thing. All of the things. All, all the things. I did a thing. So and it's, it's not just all like, that about I got chips. a car. Yeah. <laughs> Personally LOL. attacked. <laughs> LOL. Laugh out loud. Lol. Surprised you didn't say sus. I was ready for that. I or, was, or no it cap. Was origi- Suspect. That was on the list as well. I just didn't include it. No cap. Sus. Say less. It's just something I say all the time, which I'm really need to stop. <laughs> Do you know what that means? No. It's like, oh, that sounds interesting. Say less. I'll be there. <laughs> they said it sounds really rude, but it um, does. It's a TikTok thing. Mm. Yeah, there is something. Um, oh, I'm here for it. Yeah. 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 I've like heard somebody, that a lot like I posted pictures of my like when I did Lady Gaga, and somebody commented like, "Oh, I'm here for this," and I'm like, "Here for what? Yeah. <laughs> what are we doing? Are you at my door." <laughs> It means you are bussing. I'm bussing. Yeah. 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 Okay. Oh boy. Such a millennial. This, yeah. This is taking a turn. Getting a little too excited about being, you know, let's let's. You are cool, cool with the Gen Z. That's all that matters. I'm not like a regular mom. I'm a cool mom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, there's the closing bell. You have made it to the end of yet another episode of the Bullcast Podcast. If you liked what you heard and you'd like to hear more, please feel free to go to your favorite subscription service and sign up to have the podcast beam directly to your listening device every single Thursday at noon. If you'd like to find out more about the Bullcast crew, go to bullcastpodcast.com. You can find out about me and Katie and Cameron. Uh, You can um, suggest a topic if you have a topic you want to suggest, ask a question, or if you want to volunteer to be a a guest on our podcast, then drop your name in the little comment section and we'll get with you. That's Um, very Gen X. Yeah. (laughs) Um, We'll hit you up. Go on our MySpace page. 
<laughs> my top 10. Yeah. Check out my top 10 on MySpace. Um, okay. If you like pictures, we've got an Instagram handle. That handle is at Bullcast Podcast. And if you like Twitter, um, I don't know why, but we've got a handle on there too. It's at Bullcast Podcast as well. Uh, we also have a Facebook fan page. If you want to go there, you can check us out there. And finally, we talk a lot about the fact that we work at a place called uh, Pickler Wealth Advisors. As a matter of fact, I think I've mentioned David on the podcast today more than I have in a long time. Uh, David Pickler being the Pickler of Pickler Wealth Advisors. If you'd like to find out more about what we do at Pickler Wealth Advisors, what, more about our team, and more about our boss, David Pickler, feel free to go to our website. That's PicklerWealthAdvisors.com. That's advisors with an O. Not any. Ladies and gentlemen, I have given you everything that you need to go forth and Be seem busted. like maybe you know what you're talking about when you talk to your kids. No cap. So for now, I'm All Court. Sus. <laughs> I'm Katie. I'm Cam. And that's I'm Nicole. Nicole. And we're out. <laughs> <laughs>